Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm A.J. Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. I teach intelligent and independent learners like you to speak English confidently. Go to EffortlessEnglish.com, EffortlessEnglish.com, enter your email for my free audiobook and free email course. So a couple of years ago, I was in Vietnam. Last time I was in Vietnam doing a big event. And yeah, another big event, I can't remember how many people, maybe a thousand or something in the room. And I'm up on the stage and, you know, as usual, doing my high energy speaking and you know, walking around the stage. I like to walk. I like to move when I'm talking. I like to have good, strong energy. And uh, I was telling a story and I wasn't paying attention, right? I was just, you know, completely focused on, on, on the audience, looking out at the audience and wasn't looking down at my feet or the stage. <laughs> and so, I've told this story before, but I'll share it again. So imagine I'm on the stage, so I'm kind of like up on the stage like this talking, and, and I just took a step and just well, about like that. And I, <laughs> and I fell off the stage and I, boom, fell off the stage and whoo, fell onto my side in the front row. <laughs> laying down on my side. And everybody, like in the whole audience, at the same time, there was kind of a <gasps> this kind of sound, right? Everybody's like, oh, <gasps> kind of a shock. <laughs> and uh, I was shocked too. I was a little surprised too. Like, whoa, whoa, what happened? Boom, fell off the stage, and the stage was probably, you know, at least a meter high. Uh, so I'm laying there. <laughs> There's like this girl sitting there in the front row looking down at me like what the heck happened? So I just kind of looked at her smiled and uh, I just kept talking. I just I just I, I just laid there for about a minute about 60 seconds and just continued talking like nothing happened and then just slowly stood up and Walked into the audience talked to them and then walked back got on top on the stage and kept going so that's my little story. <laughs> embarrassing, if you think about it, a little bit embarrassing. Um, but what's interesting is that is afterwards, right? So the question is this: What did I focus on afterwards, as a public speaker? You know, because after a speech, I'll review. Every time I do a speech or an event or any kind of presentation, afterwards, of course, sometimes the next day, sometimes that evening, I'll go back and I'll in my mind from the beginning to the end and I'll review it and I'll kind of write down what were the good points, what were the bad points, I'll think it through. How to improve all that. And so, of course, you know, afterwards, I'm <laughs> that was one of the things I remembered. The reason I'm bringing this up is because I know that you and indeed many, many English learners have this um, question or this battle, this fight sometimes of what to focus on it, for English, for anything. Should you focus mostly on your strengths, what you're good at, what goes well, what you're doing right, how you're succeeding, even your small successes, or should you focus on uh, your weaknesses? what you did wrong, your mistakes, and then try to improve them. Now, of course, both things are useful, but the question is, which one should we focus mostly on? Which one should most of our energy be focused on? Which one will get us the better results, focusing on our strengths or our mistakes? Well, let's think this through in my case, falling off the stage. Now, easily, I think a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people giving a speech, if they fell off the stage in front of the audience in the middle of their speech, and I don't mean just fell a little bit, I mean fell off and landed on their side and they're laying down on the ground. Oh, 
I think a lot of people <laughs> would be super embarrassed by that. And afterwards, they would have just focused on that mistake or accident um, over and over and over and over and over again, focusing on it, thinking about it. Oh God, I'm so embarrassed. Oh, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> What's the result of that? All that focus on a mistake or something bad or negative. What's it going to do? It's going to destroy your confidence, right? Because you're just, but you're giving, giving more and more and more energy to this embarrassment, to this, uh, you know, mistake, whatever. And the more you do that, it will destroy your confidence. Will it make you a better speaker by focusing on that? No, not really. I don't think so. In my experience, it will not help you that much to focus on your big mistakes again and again and again and again. It doesn't help you. It hurts you because it destroys your confidence and then it destroys your motivation and it creates all this fear because then you start getting, creating all this fear that, oh my God, next time, what if I make another big mistake? What if I fall off the stage again? What if I do something even worse? Ah, and then the nervousness comes in and you become a worse speaker. You get worse, not better. So what's the alternative? What I did is I just laughed and I forgot about it. I mean, I did it in about, in one minute time, I just forgot about it. In one minute, I sat there and there was probably just a few seconds where I was a little shocked <laughs> at what happened. And I was trying to think, well, uh, hmm, what should I do? And then I just realized it doesn't matter. It's no big deal. Everybody's still listening to me, <laughs> right? If I make a big deal and act embarrassed, then it, I'm gonna make it worse. Instead, if I just pretend like no big deal and kind of ignore it, well, I did. And a minute later, everyone had forgotten about it. And I just kept on going. Probably, some people probably thought I did it on purpose to be funny or something. <laughs> and that's fine, let them think that. But I laughed, I forgot about it. Now, and then the next day, I just kind of thought very quickly when I'm reviewing my speech, I, oh yeah, I fell off the stage. So I just, you know, quick learning point to myself, hey, focus, you know, watch where you're stepping. <laughs> Be careful about getting too close to the front edge of the stage. Stay back a little bit. So I learned a little small lesson and then boom, pushed it away, forgot about it. I don't think about it constantly. When I'm gonna give a speech, I don't worry. Oh my God, will I fall off the stage again? I don't know. Instead, I, I continued reviewing that um, speech and I found lots of stuff that went very well. And in fact, when I think back to it, I think actually it's a strength because I think I handled that um, potentially very embarrassing situation. I, I feel like actually I handled it very well. I decided to focus on the, the positive part. Okay, the negative is maybe I fell off the stage, <laughs> but the positive part is that I handled it very calmly and uh, with a lot of confidence. And because of that, the presentation just kept on going. Nothing happened. It was great. But this is the power of focusing on your strengths, focusing on your improvements, on what went right. And you need to do this too, because I, you know, on Twitter, people communicate with me on Twitter a lot. My Twitter is AJ Hoge, it's my name, A-J-H-O-G-E. And a lot of the questions, a lot of the comments I get on Twitter from learners like you are about fears and worries and mistakes. Oh, I always make this mistake. I always say um and ah a lot. I don't sound confident. Um, I always make mistakes with grammar. I always do this. And there's all this worry and all this focus on the mistakes and what's wrong and what's wrong and what's wrong. The weaknesses, the problems. Too much energy being focused on these things. And when that happens, does it get better? Do, do you improve when you do that? No, not really. You actually make it worse because you, you're killing your own confidence by focusing on the negative. Here's the thing about focus. Focus gives energy. Focus is mental energy, right? If I focus on my finger, I'm kind of giving a sort of mental energy to this finger, right? And I'm not giving energy to anything else around me. I'm focusing in my attention on this thing. And when you give your attention to something, it tends to get stronger psychologically. No, not my finger, but, but my noticing my finger certainly would get stronger, right? I would suddenly start noticing, oh, look at the size, look at this. Oh, I didn't notice this line. Oh, look, my fingernails are short. I'll start noticing a lot of things. I'll start learning a lot more about my finger by just focusing on it enough. 
Now that's a silly example, obviously, because finger doesn't mean anything. But it's the same is true with, with your strengths and your weaknesses, with your mistakes and your small improvements, your small successes. When you focus on your mistakes, you are giving, you're giving your emotional and mental energy, you're focusing it on that mistake. And when you do that, it tends to get bigger and bigger and grow and grow and grow in your mind. In your mind. It grows bigger and larger and stronger in your mind. So just like if I focus on my finger, suddenly in my mind, this image of my finger is actually quite large. Whereas if it's over here, I'm not looking at it. I, it's, it's in my mind, I, you know, there, there's hard, the finger is super small. It's not, there's almost no attention. It's a little tiny image in my mind. But like this, now it's dominating my vision. Right? It's, it's much bigger now in my mind, in my perception. This is the same for any thought or any emotion or any experience or memory. When you focus on a memory, when you focus on an experience or something that happened or a weakness or a thought, you are giving mental energy to it. You're making it bigger and bigger and bigger inside your mind. You're giving it more power in your mind. It will start to control you more and influence you more and more and more and more. So you have to ask yourself, what kind of influence do you want in your own mind? If you choose negative things, if you choose weaknesses, then you create an influence on your own brain, your own way of thinking that will influ influence you to be weak or to make more mistakes or to have lower confidence. And the opposite is also true. It's the good news. When you focus on something positive, a small success, something you learned, something you did well, a strength that you have, and when you focus your energy on it, you think about it again and again and again, it gets bigger in your mind and it starts to influence you in a very strong, powerful, positive way. Now you start thinking, yeah, I'm pretty good. Yeah, I'm learning. Yes, I'm improving. And it makes you more adventurous. It makes you more strong. It makes you want to go out and try again and to do more and to learn more. So no, you don't pretend, you don't ignore your mistakes. You don't ignore the negative things. You don't pretend, oh, they're not, they didn't happen. Uh, but you just don't give them energy. Don't give them much energy. You give them a tiny little bit of attention just to learn what you need to learn. For me, falling off the stage, I did not need to give a lot of attention to that. It would have just destroyed my confidence. All I had to do was just a very small amount of attention. Oh, be careful at the edge of the stage. <laughs> right? Right? Important lesson learned. Now I forget it. It's gone. No, don't give it any more energy. On the other hand, the fact that uh, I was having a great time and that my mood was really good and that I was really great with my gestures, for example, and then I told a good story, and then I was emotionally connected to the audience, that my voice was strong, that I handled that problem falling off the stage, that I handled it so calmly and confidently and in such a relaxed way. I focus that and then I start feeling strong. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm a good speaker. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm good at this. I like doing this. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I'll learn my, what I need to learn, but it makes me stronger. It makes me want to do, speak again. I want to go do speak again. I want to speak to a bigger crowd. I want to get out there more. When you focus on your strengths and your, and your successes, that's what happens. And it's the same with English. Okay, because I know you, you worry, oh, what if I make a mistake, a grammar mistake? What if I say something they don't understand me? What if I don't sound confident? Uh, uh, you worry about all these negative things and by, you're, you're making them stronger by focusing on them. Just forget it, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Just say, yeah, okay. My pronunciation kind of sucked in that conversation, so I need to practice it a little bit and then push it away. That's all, you, you learn something from some, a problem and then you push out, then just push it away, don't think about it anymore. Start focusing on what's good. You must also tell yourself, well, what, what was good? Well, it was good that I talked to them and I actually spoke English. It's good that I understood most of what they said. It's good that I had good eye contact. I had a good, I spoke with a good loud voice. You can always find good things and you focus on those and you give them more power and then they get stronger and stronger. And then you start improving more and more and more and more. It's the same with anything. So I know you wanna be fluent and you wanna feel confident. 
So you have to remember there's a there's the skill, the basic skill of speaking English, right? Just doing it well. There's also the emotion that you want. You want both. I know you want both because I've been doing this for 21 years, so I know you want both. I know if you're if you're fluent but you have no confidence, your English is still not good because you'll be afraid to use it. And you'll feel bad every time you try to speak English. That's no good. You got to have the confidence too. You got to feel relaxed and strong and confident when speaking English. And of course, have the skill as well. You need both, but Everybody knows you need the skill, but a lot of people forget that the emotional part is also extremely important. And the emotional part will help with the skill. When you're more confident, when you focus more on the positive things and the good things and your successes and your strengths, you're, you will improve faster, much faster. You will perform better, even right now. Just as I did as a public speaker, right? If I had focused on that in the middle of that speech, after I fell down, if I just kept thinking about it, oh my God, that was so embarrassing, oh, I would have gotten distracted. My energy would have dropped. My confidence would have dropped. The rest of the speech, the rest of the presentation would have been worse. My performance, my skill would have gone down, down, down. Instead, by just pushing it away, staying focused on the positive, the good things, instead my skill went up, 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 and the presentation was a big success. So when we talk about this stuff, Absolutely. Focusing on strengths, not weaknesses, is the way to succeed. You gotta be nice to yourself, okay? You gotta just relax and let yourself make mistakes and be bad sometimes. You're gonna be bad at English sometimes. I'm bad at English sometimes, okay? <laughs> I don't know why I'm tired, something, I can't get the words out. All right pronounce something badly, or I can't think of that word. Uh, uh, what's that word? Uh, uh, and I can't remember it. It happens. We all, it happens to everybody. Yeah, native speakers, English teachers, everybody. It's going to happen. Just eh, forget about it. Push it aside. Focus on what's going well. And this is just true for your whole life, by the way, not only English. You'll just be a happier person, and you'll be more effective, and you'll learn faster. You'll improve faster. Everything will be better by focusing more on your strengths not on your weaknesses, not on what's negative. <clears throat> All right, so that's your assignment. Other news, Effortless English News. Where have I been for the last several months? This is the first show, Effortless English show. As you can see, it's Christmas time. Look at their nice Christmas tree in the background. Um, here, let's get some more light on it. All right, can you see it? Here, I'll get some more light. So anyway, I, uh, I have taken a break from uh, the Effortless English show for a while. Uh, simply, as I said today, I did a live Facebook and uh, live Facebook video. Uh, the Facebook, my Facebook, by the way, is just Effortless English. Facebook.com slash Effortless English altogether. So sometimes I do live videos and answer questions on Facebook. So I did that today, and as I was telling them, tell you the same thing, I've been gone just because I haven't had any good ideas, honestly. I've had some things going in my personal life with my family I have to put a lot of energy into for now. Uh, I started doing jujitsu, and that took a lot of energy for a while. And, uh, and also just, I don't know, didn't have any, didn't have any ideas, so taking a break. I'm back now. So. The Effortless English Show is back. Hope you enjoy it. More shows are coming soon. Enjoy Christmas. If you, if you celebrate Christmas in your country, enjoy it. Uh, I think we all celebrate New Year's, so certainly have a great New Year's celebration. And we're going to start the new year with power, right? By focusing on your strengths. All right. Uh, as always, go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com effortlessenglishclub.com and get one of my courses. Get the Power English course. That's a great one to start with. All right. Speak English confidently. Speak fluently. See you next time. Bye for now.